<laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Hi, I'm Phil. I'm Kevin. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. We're not going to cook today. Instead, we're going to teach you how to make a raised bed garden. It looks like that. We made one as a trial, just to make sure we could do it. And we found out that we can. This project was uh, sponsored by our good friend, Sid Kane. He gave us a bunch of money, and we were like, well, we don't want to cook with that, so... <laughs> I don't know, we just bought this stuff instead. Today we're gonna make a classic raised bed garden, which is a four by four foot arrangement. It's basically just a box that you put in the ground and you fill it up with different dirt than you have. And that solves like a, a series of problems that many people have, which is sometimes the earth that is in their background isn't good for growing vegetables or fruits or herbs. I think he's having the time of his life. <laughs> we're gonna make ours out of cedar which is one of the most expensive woods you can build a box out of, but it comes with the added benefits of it's nice looking and it is naturally rot resistant, so it should last longer, hopefully. I had to special order these planks because I, I guess they just don't keep them around. But this is a, a two by 10 by eight, so that's two, two inches this way, 10 inches this way, and eight feet in length. If you do the math, a 4x4 four four box will need approximately two of these. We're also going to use a 4x4. Four four. This is actually a 4x4x4, four by four by four. and it's only a 4x4x4 four by four by four because it was a 4x4x8, four by four by but we cut it in half, making it a 4x4x4. Four by four by four. Basically like a post. I've got a uh, miter saw as well. Some people call it a chop saw. This is what I'm going to use to cut the wood. Uh, I also bought this with Sid Kane money, which I was like... <laughs> I'm like, oh, my cooking show got sponsored. Let me buy a, a chop saw. <laughs> but I'm also just thinking, like, uh, maybe we could chop some bones or something with it. <laughs> that sounds nice and nice and sanitary. What you got in there? Uh, it's iced coffee. I'm on my uh, my second large mug of extremely caffeinated iced coffee. So I think that like once it makes its way through part of my stomach and into my intestines, I'm gonna be like. And throwing boards around and shit. A bunch of other stuff that you'll need too. I know that it, we, we are not a full-time DIY project channel. So like typically in these kind of videos you have like here's everything you'll need. It's like a shopping list. And they have those in cooking channels too, right? But we never do that. So <laughs> I'm not gonna do that for this either. We're just gonna consistent. Yeah. We're gonna give you that consistent level of information or lack thereof. Alright, so the first step is we're gonna cut a bunch of wood and we're gonna measure out our cuts. Okay, so we need four one foot posts. This is what is this called a square? I believe so, yeah. So basically you use the square to Draw your cut line. And if this is not super precise, that's okay. You're still gonna end up with a box at the end. Posts are gonna go in the ground, so you have a little more, a little, a little less. Not that big a deal. But we're gonna do the same drawing for our long, longer board. So we're basically gonna be cutting these out a four foot mark, which is in half. The squares are nice because you can just kinda continue your line after you started it. And we'll do the same for the other board. This is uh, this is really riveting, isn't it? So you'll see that some of my tools are not brand spanking new, and this one in particular, although it does look like a fidget spinner or the cryptocurrency ripple. This is potentially my great-grandfather's? I don't know, I have like, I've inherited tools from so many people who are like, F it, I'm, not, I'm never fixing anything again. <laughs> well now we get to the exciting part, we get to cut stuff. Like Kevin. No! So as you can see, I'm squatting down to operate this saw. The saw is supposed to be bolted to a table and secured, and just generally not used in this way. And also I should be wearing eye protection. Uh, but here we are. So basically, when I do this, I try to line it up with the blade. You can just like set it down with the line, make sure your cut's pretty close. Make sure that it's flush against the guides, and then you just cut it. So I cut the middle one first at the suggestion of the cameraman from a balance perspective, and I think that was a good call. So we'll continue with our cuts. I didn't buy the one with the laser guide, and I kind of regret it, but here we are. <laughs> Those are almost the same size. It's pretty good. And our last piece for the, the legs. That was a close enough. 
solidly close enough. So we will set those aside. If you get some splintering or whatever, it's really not that big a deal. I wonder if I could just, yeah. Use the sidewalk as sandpaper. <laughs> That's right, sand it with the sidewalk. So this is a, a 10 inch saw. <laughs> And this is a 10 inch wide board, so I am not able to do this in a single cut. So we'll do one side of the cut, flip the board around, and finish her off. And this one's long enough that I think it is helpful to have a buddy brace it. This is Kevin. He introduced himself earlier. And somehow I actually lined it up first, like perfectly on the first try. Well, almost perfectly. It's not gonna matter, ultimately. You can see we got part of that that cut through. So we're gonna flip around and do the other side. And if I, if you did it properly, it'll be like pretty even across. I think it did a pretty good job. But you can even, you can even see this board's not perfect like this little boat on that end. So that's fun. That'll be fun to bolt together. So we'll do that with the other board as well. And then we'll be good on cutting wood, I think. We've done this one time before. We are using, what are we using? Triple coated deck screws, number nine, three and a half. And I regret getting number nines because they have a, a hex key <laughs> type top. And the actual drill bit that I have is probably not suited for that. But we're gonna see if we can get it to work. Uh, just a note, many people will tell you that you should pre-drill your screws, which means just using a regular drill bit to make a hole, then driving your screw in. We ain't got time for that, <laughs> so we're not gonna do it. Also, this Try to use a level surface. We're gonna put two screws here, and hopefully, it'll be fine. <laughs> I gotta get a different drill bit. Yeah, BRB. All right, let's keep drilling. Okay, something I learned from Kevin is that you need to hold the drill at a 90 degree angle of some kind from what you're drilling. What the? There we go. All right, so that's our first first set. We might have to wait for the drill to charge at some point, so I forgot to charge it. <laughs> I'm what's called dumb. Now we're gonna attach the leg to the post. They basically just square it up with the corner and we're gonna put two bolts and two bolts. Yeah, I, yes, that's what I meant, screws. <laughs> Not bolts. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, and two more. Okay, and if you did everything right, it should be relatively square and very solid. I don't really want to whack it around too much though because it might knock it loose somehow. I don't know. So we'll be doing that a few more times. We're going to basically use the same level surface and rotate the, the box as we attach more pieces. But one thing to make sure you do properly is make sure you have consistent inside-outside with your boards. That is to say, when we attach that board at that end, it needs to be on the inside, not on the outside. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't have an actual box. Don't do this. Yeah, don't do that. Do do that. Do do. So, like we were mentioning, you can see it's a consistent board placement. Don't don't f this up. All right. By the way, if you can have a buddy help you with this, you should you should do that, especially if they know what they're doing. Kevin, do you know what you're doing? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't know how to use a drill. So we've got one more side and a couple of legs to put on. Hopefully we didn't f it up. Last time we did this, when we got to the very end, everything was looking good, and then we got to the very end, and one of our legs was like sticking out like, <laughs> I don't know, like an inch or something. Yeah, like an inch more. We had to use a hacksaw. That's <laughs> bad. So you'll see what this looks like in a minute. We will be back. So we finished drilling it together. Didn't do too bad of a job. These, uh, the legs are a little bit more even than they were the last time we did it. You can see that that's pretty flush. Got some exceptions over here. This one's sticking out a little bit, but you see the how the gaps, <laughs> there's gaps in the wood, didn't quite get everything together. That is because we didn't cut the boards straight and I think a little bit, they were a little bit warped anyways. Well, ultimately, I don't think that's gonna be too big a deal. Wood warps over time anyway, so maybe it'll magically warp together, probably not. Next step is gonna to be to line the inside with pond liner. 
and we're just uh, a staple gun would be the easiest way to do it but mine's broken so I'm just gonna nail a bunch of nails into it. I'm using pond liner which is just heavy duty plastic. This stuff's actually pretty expensive. I was kind of unhappy with how pricey. <laughs> It would make sense to use uh, scissors, but I can't seem to find mine, <laughs> so I'm just using a box cutter. And it's working pretty well. Even though uh, cedar is pretty pretty good resistance against uh, wetness and rot, it's still helpful to have some liner to give it a little extra life. I'm doing a terrible job, but that's, that's alright. We'll trim it up after we put it on. Yeah, so I got my pond liner here, and I got these crappy nails. They are really crappy. But basically, I'm just gonna put them in part of the way and then knock them down like staples. And we're gonna try to keep this somewhat close to the top. It doesn't even go all the way up because we can trim it up. But basically, just put enough nails in to hold it in place and then you'll have some protection from the water. Putting in four or five nails. Now that we've built our box, we need a place to put it. We're just gonna put it next to the other one. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more square against the garage than the last one. Need enough space between them to get get in there and work comfortably. I'm gonna put it three feet, thereabouts. So three feet is, I think, how big a, a doorway is. So there should be plenty of space to work in both pits. So I'm gonna roughly mark out the area and hopefully my esteemed friend Kevin will assist as he did last time. And dig this hole. Measuring out four feet. Probably not square. Four feet. So we're gonna dig up the sod. Basically just gonna pull up the top of it and probably throw it in the corner like we did with the rest of it. We're gonna use a shovel to remove the top layer of sod just a couple inches. Enough that you can get the grass off basically. And then we're throwing it on this tarp for transport. So basically, you're, uh, so you're doing sod, you know, working a shovel in a little bit. Like so, angle it down, and pop off the sod. And then ultimately, you'll cut a piece of sod and just toss it. And you do that for 16 square feet. But I think Kevin's gonna do most of it. We'll be back once we're done. The hole's ready, and we're putting a box in it. We're gonna try to make sure it's Fairly square with the garage. Looks better than the other one. And we'll step on the corners. We'll actually pack the outside with some of the sod that we dug up. So, so far so good. You can tuck the liner down. Next up, we're gonna put some pieces of cardboard down, which will act as a, yeah, you can cut it if you want, as a weed barrier. You can also use like a, a fine mesh or even just weed cloth. But this will prevent weird stuff from growing up in the garden which we don't really want. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but every bit will help. So our hole is a little bit big, as you can see. So we're gonna take pieces of sod and pack them back down along the side of the box, like so. And you can step on it to make it flush. So we'll be doing that for a couple minutes. Cardboard got like a pretty decent barrier. It's not like totally perfect, but I think it'll be sufficient to keep out most of the stuff. And really there was just grass here anyway, so. We don't have too much to worry about. Okay, so our box is done, it's in the ground. Got our barrier, and uh, now we're gonna put soil in it. We're actually gonna do a different video on putting the soil in. I've talked about what we bought for it. My uh, super scientific mix of soil media. So now I'm gonna actually put them in, and Kevin's got a pitchfork, and he's gonna mix it up. You know, I think all summer long, and maybe even, uh, Autumn, you'll see me come out here and harvest some veggies and herbs that we'll use on the show. And people will be like, ah, that's nice. Yeah, well, that's how you do it.